Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Brad. Welcome back, Brad. So this is our back. podcast about anything and everything off road. As always, we're socially distanced. We'll be forever socially. When we actually record a show in person, like we're just going to end the podcast. That's That'll the be last the last one. episode. <laughs> like we, We're at 117 episodes. Uh, that we've never met in the physical same space. So We should throw like a random arbitrary date out there like five or 10 years from now or something and say everybody that's been on the show come to this fucking like <laughs> concert hall we're, we're gonna do one in for all and that's it Call we're it. gonna meet in southern utah for the fun of it like yes. just <laughs> or iceland bring it back to where we started right so no don't bring me back to iceland we just had that conversation <laughs> anyway uh so it's always socially distanced i'm still in kansas city ross is in the northeast in connecticut and brad is in ohio which some people consider the midwest I do. But then if I'm in Kansas City, I'm in a different time zone than you. Yes. So how can the same region be in two different time zones? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think I think time zones don't really matter because like part of the West is definitely in mountain time. Correct. True. <laughs> See, that's so, where I, I, I don't consider it being out West until you hit the mountain time zone. Right. Sure. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I group all of that West of me as... The West. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we can do the right. Any, anyway, that's, I had a lot of former coworkers and friends from Ohio and I always gave them crap about like, they consider themselves Midwest. I was like, what time's your news come on? Bet it's 11. Like, that's not. <laughs> Man, you want to start a war? Start talking to people in the Hudson Valley about what they consider upstate New York. Oh, yeah. that's the same. That's the same as Michigan is. There's a debate on what's up north. Up north. Wouldn't it just be the Upper Peninsula? Isn't that no? Because that's the UP. Yeah. That's, oh, the UP is different from up north. Uh, yeah, where? up north. Up north is like <laughs> yeah, is they wear on the palm, <laughs> is it? <laughs> and then the UP, the Southern Mission Mitten, is the UP. That's exactly. its own thing. <laughs> it's Amazing. Its own did you know? Did you know that Michigan actually won the UP because of a war with Ohio? What? Yeah. Sorry? There was a war over Toledo. Because the way the map was drawn, Ohio claimed that it was Ohio and Michigan claimed that it was Michigan. So they had a war about it. And then the president was like, hey, 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 stop. <laughs> Michigan will give you this shit up north and up the UP above you. And Ohio gets Toledo. Huh. And that's, yeah, it's, I think like 40 people were killed. It was, wow, it's that's uh, 42 that you had like, so wow. Does- does okay. every state aside from when the states seceded it's right. the only time that states <laughs> fought, fought each other yes well so... i think every neighboring states have some <laughs> version of that like that could definitely be like the war like because yeah. like kansas and missouri during the civil war like they had people that attack Lawrence and people go back and attack missouri like that that shit happens all the time like literally the morning sports program here is called the border patrol <laughs> because it's that is border line offensive no it's fantastic it's been that way for like 20 years now so i love it so but like kansas and missouri like the university of kansas university of missouri they hate each other like ohio state and michigan they hate each other like it's yeah. just yeah. it's weird how those things set up and it's probably based on historical stuff most times yeah Crazy. these days none of it really matters i don't know it, what, it really does so what was the upper like did it belong to wisconsin or was it just a territory like how did, i don't think wisconsin existed at the time okay so it was probably just like random territory like the person was like fine you can have this <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all over toledo which is a town nobody wants to go to right it was a shipping town and i don't know it was it was a big deal at the time i guess i actually hear about toledo quite a bit because my wife works in international logistics and so like they <laughs> ship stuff out of toledo like that's yeah. that's a thing yeah yeah, so, yeah. that's so freaking nuts. i didn't know that Anyway, well, we're completely off lesson. topic. Yeah. First time we've done U.S. history in a while. You want to talk about saber rattling with the F-150 Rattler? Yes. Is that a but segue? Also, that seemed like a sure. stretch. No, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so bad. Yeah. Connecting cool. dots. We'll go with it. Uh, okay. We're going to do the news quick because it's not that exciting this week. So Ford has decided that Raptor and Tremor and FX4 are not enough. And uh, they've also decided that those aforementioned off-roady pickups are um, unbelievably expensive and people who don't have you know 
anywhere between like $55,000 and $80,000 also probably want to go off-road. So they brought a lot of the equipment on the FX4 down to the XL, which is the base level F-150 trim. So it gets a, an e-locker in the rear, um, skid plates, all terrains, and then a bunch of really strange, oh, and uh, special shocks. But other than that, it's just like pulling at threads to try to come up with another logo because it's like, it's Rattler, you know, it's not Shelby. It's not any of the other things we've used in the past. It's a, it's a new one, we promise. So there uh, Do people in F-150s actually go off-road? In very small capacities, yes. And most of them are more overlanders, you know? Yeah, like yeah. Either I was gonna say, that's a, that's a big platform to be yeah. trail hopping. I have personally seen a Raptor pull up to a trail and then back away because it wasn't fit between the trees. <laughs> Even a, a Raptor is quite a bit wider than the normal F-150, but it's still, you know, this is for the person who like wants the off-road stuff because they're working on a construction site or like they got to get to somewhere through the woods where they're hunting and they could help, you know? Um, yeah. But it's, on a, it's on a two track that, I could probably do in my super hundred <laughs> percent. The ambulance definitely could. Oh, it definitely could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely could. An outback wilderness will walk away from one of these, but you know, <laughs> it's a fart. So that's the news there. Is that, is that the outback wilderness counter? Am I supposed to count? Like we mention oh in every God, show. I like <laughs> I know. I still haven't seen yes. a forest or wilderness though. This I haven't seen Forrester, really but I see consistently, probably on a weekly basis, at least one wilderness. And it's not the same mm -hmm. one. They're always a different, yeah. one's blue, one's white, one's gray. Like, it's not like my neighbor who drives by me once a week. Like, Right. Brad, what were you saying? I was saying this next thing on the list, I'm, I'm really excited about. That's kind of cool. You are excited about. We, I think everybody is collectively excited. So we occasionally dabble in rally cars, so it's worth mentioning. Tomorrow, we're recording this on March 30th. Tomorrow is... March 31st, and we will finally, after probably, what, a year or 14 months of speculation and waiting, see what Toyota's Corolla GR hatch is, because they get the GRRs overseas, it's tiny little hatchback with all-wheel drive and a manual and a turbo, three-cell, and it's like the rowdiest thing, it's awesome. So, yeah. and uh, would this be a 23? Probably, at this point, yeah. I mean, unless okay. if it lands before, like... They keep moving the model years up, so it's got to be here by August. It's not. It's not. I, I mean, like stuff. Stuff that comes out in February is still called the twenty three. Like, it's, yeah. I, I have like renderings that of people are just guessing. It's basically going to be the new WRX STI hatch that Subaru will not build. <laughs> Brad, Brad probably didn't listen to the episode where we had the head of to, uh, Subaru PR in the show, and Ross was like, "So, Todd." Help us out. When's the STI coming? He's like, I can't say anything. And then literally like two weeks later, they were like, by the way, it's not coming at all. Like, it's nice. so, so good. Yeah. It's a good thing that he, like Todd was a great guest and we're so grateful to have had him on the show, but he, his camera was off and I, I know he was shaking his head when I was asking those questions. <laughs> it was so good. So this, this rendering was why, I mean, that's blatantly a Subaru hood scoop from the current or prior WRX, but otherwise I would try. It's shit. probably pretty close to what we're gonna get. Yeah, honestly. Dude, my yep. my oldest is starting to look for cars. Like, I know I, mean, I, I that'd be awful to put a teenager in, but like, I want it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, the the Corolla XSE hatch that's out right now is pretty solid. Get it with stick. No, nope. Corolla hatch with a stick is like a good buy. Honestly, a really good buy. Twenty one grand or whatever it is. Twenty two. Yeah. So. Yeah. Give a, I like that. I was on the launch of that. Actually, one of the last things I reviewed for Hooniverse, and I, I loved that car. Good colors, too. Got them, mm -hmm. like, see it from space blue. Yeah. So. There's that one. I, I'm digging this, like, weird tan. Is that like a, a muted That's gold? Brown. <laughs> it's not brown. Yeah, it's kind it's, of a goldy tan. Yeah. It's brown. Something. It looks brown. I don't know. It's good. In, it's good in any color. Um, it's kind of like the unhung, unsung, unhung, <laughs> unhung. I mean, unsung, it is kind of know. the unhung too. So. A, a little unhung, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good cars. So, anyways, moving on. So we're really excited for the 
Corolla GR hatch. And then the next one, some questions about the excitement around it. So Lotus, maker of lightweight manual transmission rear wheel drive sports cars, has released their first crossover, which looks like a Lamborghini Urus that got stung by a thousand wasps. Um, Is it stung or like somebody like punched it in the face a couple times and is like also holding its face down. Like, yes. I feel like somebody went bam, bam. And then was like squishing them down. You know, like when you're the brother on the bottom of the pile. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's all of those. It's uh, <laughs> it's a curious thing. So before we actually like talk about it, I just want to read this one line from the press okay. release, which had us fuming yesterday. So a bold new dimension to the Lotus performance car portfolio, the, Electra, Elytra, do we know how to say this? Is there not a pronunciation guide? Why? I mean, they didn't do it with um, um, Amira. Amira, it's Amira. I mean, sure. Um, So the Electra delivers a significant number of firsts for Lotus. The first five-door production car, the first model outside the sports car segment, the first lifestyle EV, the most connected Lotus ever. As in like, it's got Wi-Fi connection? As in it's going to do all of the modern connectivity stuff that crossover buyers are looking for Mm -hmm. but and so it'll probably have like uh you know siri or whatever and apple carplay alexa Mm -hmm. sure yeah it's gonna have all of that crap but those of us who were throwing our arms up in fury are (laughs) like longing for I no. hate it, but like everybody's doing it, dude. And it it moves units, hundred like, percent. I I used to hate it when Porsche did it. I still do, but it's sixty percent of the cars they sell, right? Are are either Macans or Cayennes. Surprise, it's like, not more. And that's just in the U.S. In other markets, mm-hmm. it's bigger. So yeah, it's no. Yeah. I mean. It's it's a, a mandatory thing for Lotus to do to stay in business. Well, um, Lamborghini's doing it. Ferrari's doing it. Ferrari's doing it. Yeah, like it's for, it's, yeah, Ferrari looks kind of just like this from what we've seen. Yeah. Who? But is it is Geely behind Lotus? Who's behind yes, Lotus? Yes. Geely owns okay. Volvo and Lotus, and they've bought the Utah Motorsports campus, which is a good thing because hopefully they've done some like actual, you know, the handling by Lotus thing will hopefully be on Lotus's own crossover. Wait. Who who bought Utah? Geely or Utah Geely. or Lotus? Uh, Geely funded it, but they are branding it under Lotus. Okay, so we're gonna so. get Lotus Nitro Rally Cross <laughs> or Nitro Rally Cross at Lotus Utah Motorsport Park. Hopefully, that'd be crazy. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, I don't know. This is the world we live in. Um, it's worth noting because Lotus was like they were the holdout for sticking to their guns, well, and now. And then into the other side. Press release. You referred to it as a five door car. That's what they said. That that's a crossover. Like that's and and that just might be like that might be the definition of car moving forward is a slightly lifted crossover utility vehicle that will stop referring to as crossovers and just call them cars because there won't be any cars left. Do you call them a car car or crossover? Right, but we don't know like how big or tall this thing's going to be. Really, is it is the Macan a kind of truck? A but... truck. <laughs> For you, everything's like it's all relative. You know, it's an yeah. off-road podcast. I prefer the term rig. <laughs> it's a rig. <laughs> Everything is it's, a rig. It's a wheeler. I've been about I've been around some rigs lately. So, <laughs> so that's that's the news there. Um, well, there's we'll one last piece. Now. One last piece. So, Expedition Portal. Uh, the perpetual go-to for reliable and good off-road content has posted online an article from last year's fall issue of the magazine with some pretty important winching techniques. And it's basically just a big refresher course. So very much recommend everybody go to Expedition Portal, read The Art of Winching because more times than not, when in a winching situation, I guarantee if there's 20 things on this list, you could probably knock off 15 of them as being done incorrectly. And yes, there is no, like the instances in which you would 
reconstruct all of these to happen are perfect situation and off-roading is never a perfect situation Correct. but it's just really good important stuff that can eliminate a lot of the danger from a dangerous situation and uh we don't want anybody getting hurt so run through this stuff maybe at some point later in another show we'll like read through it if we're you know desperate for content or something but it's uh it's you know i've I've used a winch almost every time I've gone off-road in my life. So it's uh, important stuff. And that's it. That's the news. Sweet. What do you want to talk about from you? (laughs) Uh, I spent a week with the Yukon AT4. Okay. Which the only real differences from other Yukons is that it has a two-speed transfer case. Uh, It has skid plates. It has red tow hooks that they are keen to point out are horizontal as opposed to vertical and it's got 20 inch wheels with all turns and, and that's the long and the short of it um you know hill descent and ascent control but nothing really else um to write home about uh having spent a week with the diesel yukon denali last fall i can't say and so this one has the 6.2 it comes the base is the 5.3 this is the 6.2 it weighs 5600 pounds so you know do the math like the gas mileage is pretty abysmal but the diesel was also just so much more refined and just suited the character this thing of the huge vehicle that the at4 has become so or that you come to become so it's a shame that they don't offer the diesel in this because oh. it's a nice truck drives pretty well um it's enormous you know like truly massive vehicle basically the size of what suburbans used to be um, but you know, the six, two, as good as it is in some other applications, it just, the diesel was just a more pleasant experience. Okay. Just so, drink a lot of, drink a lot of gas. Cause you road trip this one, right? Yeah. We took it from Connecticut. I, I put 350 miles on it, which isn't that bad, but, uh, but that, those that's East coast 350. That's it's a lot East coast more. 350. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it was $106 worth of fuel. So the so gas pump actually. East- East Coast gas price too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. But the gas pump <laughs> shut off and I had to put my credit card back in. So For nine more dollars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I've had to do that a lot lately. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. If it was my money, I'd probably skip the AT4 altogether because it doesn't really like, there's no real benefit, you know, get yourself your own set of 18s or 20s and some better all terrains than these and get the diesel called it that i got 27 miles per gallon in the diesel over 400 miles you know yeah i so, saw i saw a yukon xl get on the highway the other day and it didn't have an xl badge on it it just said yukon on the side <laughs> and it it like threw me for a loop i had to be like wait do they not label those as they just don't I mean, label them as the xl anymore i've seen some pretty sketchy body shop stuff where like the wrong badges were put on or they you know forget yeah. to put the badges on or they spell cars wrong like Vlavo. that's because you true were story. a bottle Volvo dealer this is a true story though so that left uh that leaves tomorrow and then is replaced by the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk the two row uh-huh. one and uh, we'll circle back on that it's not the four by eight it's not? everybody's been no it's the it's the v6 it's the Pentastar. so everybody's been out driving the four by eight there is, there is a Trailhawk 4 by e though. There is. Yes, there is. It's $59,000 and change. Again, 50 is the new 35. You just said a number but that only sounded like 42. There's still a tax incentive on that, though, too. That is because true. Because it's 4x8. That's true. Right. Yes, there, there is no tax that's incentive the, on this one. That's why the Wranglers were selling so well, because it was actually cheaper than the comparable Wrangler gas. I mean, so that's the move. Is that why yeah. I see so many Rubicon four by E's? Because yeah. they were like, take seventy five hundred dollars off too. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah, also, so people were getting a lease deal, and the the lease deal on them was insane. It was like, I don't know, two ninety nine a month or something like that, and the seventy five hundred dollars on top of that. And mm-hmm. yeah. this in this economy, no wonder, like, right? <laughs> like, I mean, it was last year before everything blew up, but yeah. Yep. Yep. So. We'll circle back on that on the uh, on the, the Pentastar. Google Trailhawk lease deals. <laughs> so, 
So Chris, how about your new jerk? Yeah, so uh, after spending the summer laid off from work, I got a job and worked on that one for only six months before I left. Uh, I'm selling adventure vans now. So um, Hell yeah. not completely tuned up and ready to go yet, just in training and working it out. But uh, I am very happy with my decision so far. They were like, we'd like you to browse this website of components and accessories. And I was like, you mean what I do in my spare time? You're going to pay me to do that now? And so <laughs> you already do this. Yeah. And they're like, well, this is the Illuminous ladder. And I was like, I knew that, but okay. Like, <laughs> uh, no, so, it's, it's wait, been really that, interesting. What? That's the name of an accessory? Illuminous. Illuminous yeah. ladder. Yeah. It's made, yeah. well, it's made out of aluminum. It's a, it's, they actually do all kinds that's of. That's the brand, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the oh, brand of. Ross, I actually reach out to them. That to sounds. Have them on the show and they were like we sell everything we make we really appreciate it but like <laughs> we don't need it we don't need it to a luminous ladder ourselves. sounds that's like the something. thing that blows my mind is i you know i looked at buying some stuff from them for the uh for the van which we'll talk about in a little bit it's so expensive it is. how much it's, are we talking like we're talking like four thousand dollar bumpers yeah so that's that's well, what Ross was looking at had, the other day. Yeah, yeah Chris and I for had this conversation van, last for week. a van I paid eleven thousand dollars for. Right. Like, this is insane. So I would have to spend eight grand for bumpers for both both ends of this van. So Jesus. and they and they do like front and rear bumpers. They do like swing out arms in the back boxes. Uh, we don't use any other roof racks. Uh, we do pro- our own proprietary roof racks. Um, so, but the the company I'm working for, like everyone. Like half the people I met there, they I've I've been asking like, so how'd you get started and stuff like that, and everyone's like, well, I didn't know this company was here, <laughs> which cracks me up all the time, because in Kansas City there's an adventure can- van company that nobody knows about, so it's called Van Do It, which is a name, uh, but the thought process behind how it started, the way they've designed things on the inside, um, it it is. It's not a, we'll do whatever you want. Like we have, they have done research and thought it through and they're probably not going to change. Uh, they'll do some custom stuff, but really the, the, the stuff that they're putting into the vans has been to the point where you're not just like, you can have someone build you a cabin in a van. There's no guarantee that that cabin in a van is going to last you years down the road. First of all, they stopped making cars out of, other than Morgan. They've stopped making cars out of wood a long time ago. Like, stop putting wood in these things so uh, a lot of it's marine grade a lot of it's aluminum with t-track like but at the same time like they have wood grain finishes but it'll be vinyl that's like waterproof stuff they actually want you to go and use and do things with it uh more than one time so uh if you're in the market for an adventure van uh hit me up (laughs) cool good stuff happy for you yeah it's uh it it really has been a couple of nerdy days to be like all right so now, now let's break down the lithium battery system versus the AGM battery system. Like I want to know like the invert, which inverted were you? Mm-hmm. The one that blew my mind today is I saw a prototype in the back. Maybe I'm not supposed to talk about prototypes. We haven't actually you probably talked sh- about <sighs> this at work at all about what I can and can't say on the podcast. Like it's, it's really cool. I, the furnaces they used to are, are, are pretty awesome. Uh, just cause it runs off the regular fuel tank. And it has a level indicator. So like it won't run your gas tank dry. Like it, once it gets to a quarter tank, the furnace shuts off. That's so like that's kind of brilliant. Yeah, that's that's definitely different. Just make sure you carry There's, extra fuel. Well, yeah, but like that's <laughs> it's everything. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so, I'm super cool. excited. If you want to talk about specific stuff, like seriously, I'll have a nerdy conversation about what is going on. This is here. your job now. Yeah, it is. Good we for you. spent a lot of time doing it. Good for you. I definitely do need to talk to him about, hey, what can I say on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, that's probably a subject to talk about sooner rather than later, being that we t- we will probably be talking about this with regularity now. Well, there's I definitely know there are other prototypes that I'm not supposed to talk about. So <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so speaking of prototypes, man of many projects is our guest this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It you know it is a lifestyle. You can you can take the scumbag out of the I don't know something yeah. something something, yeah. something take the dirt bag uh, out yeah yeah I have too many projects and I have um, cars in too many places 
and that's the true downside. Yep. Yeah. You have, you have every you have a car in every time zone now. Uh, not no. I don't have anything in Mountain Time. Because Reno's actually far enough west. Reno's. Yeah. Yeah. Reno's Reno's West Coast. Uh, actually, Reno is further west than Los Angeles. If you look at a map, that's it cuts in crazy. the bottom. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, no, regardless, <laughs> you have your hands full. Um, I do. I do. I have um, five cars in Reno, one in Los Angeles, two, three, four here. You're being and Ohio. One, and one in uh, Atlanta at my dad's house. Plus a motorcycle here and two motorcycles in Reno. That's... So you, you skip mountain and central. <laughs> yeah, I don't have, I don't have anything either. No, at all. Well, we, that's just... we just need to park something in my driveway just... just so you can check a box. Yes. So <laughs> I'm, I'm currently in the process of getting rid of uh, my Leaf, okay. my red 944, and probably the overlanding Audi. Wow. Okay. okay. The Audi Audi has come to a close. Huh. Yeah. I too many things. Too many things. Too many mm-hmm. things. And just the gas that it would cost to drive it across the country, it's like not worth that. Mm-hmm. Fair. So, yeah, that's, so that's fair. Anyway. Um, um what what condition is the Audi in these days? So it's for the, those... there's nothing wrong with it. I mean the battery's dead, but like I drove it but to the house the other day well the other day like a year ago (laughs) yeah that's time for you but i I mean it's just been sitting in the backyard like there's reno's the land that rust forgot so like nothing Mm -hmm. happens there Mm -hmm. Um, so i know like there's no rust but like how's rubber fair it's fine i mean okay cracky it's uh it's all of that stuff is is like under cover. Okay. So the only thing that really gets bad is when you leave it out in the sun. Okay. If it if it goes uncovered for very long, like uh, plastics become brittle and crack and right. get nasty. Mm-hmm. Like I had a an e bike, and it had cargo bags on the back, and it had you know that um, uh, like webbed. Um, like it had the plastic buckles with those. Yeah, webbing. yeah. Kind of, the, it, the like fake moly gear, or whatever. Molly. Yeah, it literally oh. just disintegrated. Oh. Like the whole just. Uh, God. That's the opposite problem from what we have, which is just moisture. Yeah, <laughs> you know? like yeah, it'll die of moisture. So anyway, um, yeah, I recently moved to Ohio. Uh, back to Ohio. We were here. Eight, eight and a half years ago, and a lot of things have changed in the last eight and a half years for me and for Ohio, uh, this area. I'm in Akron um, area. And yeah, just kind of like opportunity knocked and I, I decided to, to take it up on it. So yeah, a um, bunch you've of weird some, stuff. You've had some good changes. And, good changes, uh, good changes, just, yeah. Not just talking car stuff, but yeah, um, um, all good things, all good things. Definitely, yeah, definitely. you know, I'm working on a million other projects and and not just cars. Uh, starting new businesses and you know, getting into real estate and all kinds of other things. So yeah, I'm like a real robber estate. baron all of a sudden. Like I know, right? <laughs> so yeah uh my my the one that'll probably make the the most dent here is um i kind of picked up a v6 cayenne um <laughs> it belongs to a friend of mine and a v6 what cayenne that's what i thought yeah. you said yeah yeah man of man of uh of Porsche faithfulness. Yeah. Has- well, that's why I that's why I say I kind of picked it up is it belongs to a friend of mine, but we're gonna try and like rehab it okay. to uh make it a, a flat sixes project. And we'll probably do some oh, cool. other stuff. Um wheels and tires and lift kit and bumpers and roof rack and all that. We're gonna do stuff. like homage to the uh 
What was the, the crazy orange? Trans Siberian one. one? Trans Siberian one, yeah. No, I think um I think we're gonna go to Porsche's first off-roader as the inspiration, which Ooh. was the uh, uh, Rothmans. No, way before that. How much way the, before that? 1967. Oh fuck. Okay. That is Monte Carlo before. rally winner. Oh, I ain't clearly my Porsche history knowledge is not up to snuff here. <laughs> 1967 Porsche uh, Monte. I'm not, stop, get out of my head. I'm already typing. I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to screw with you. Okay, so that's an awesome project. So, so I mean, you're swapping P car for P car. So, so the 944 is going. Um, yes. And- so yeah, the uh, I have I share a 944 Turbo with Ethan Tufts in Los Angeles. <laughs> Which is, oh man, what's his channel? Uh, Hello Road. Hello Road, that's it. Um, which he can keep it up. I don't really care. It, it can <laughs> stay in LA. I can drive it when I'm there. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, I'm getting rid of the 944, the Audi, and the Leaf, which leaves the Boxster project. Right. Which we which want to talk about. I, I knew it was a long-term project, but now moving across the country has made it a longer-term project. Was the Leaf supposed to be for that project? No. Oh. No, no I wasn't the Leaf because it was two thousand dollars. Oh, okay. And I wasn't the, wait, but, but wasn't there a discussion of Leaf batteries or motors yes, for it? But he no. already had that motor. I already had that motor. I bought that motor like four uh, years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, he he I, was waiting on custom drive shafts, I believe. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Well. I was waiting on stripping. I was waiting on me stripping it out and then taking it somewhere to get a um, roll cage put in. Oh, okay. And I still have not done that, so I need to finish that. And that is still uh, living in Reno. That is still living in Reno. Yeah, it's. I okay. bought uh, uh, Quick Jacks, put it up on Quick Jacks, and it's been there ever since. <laughs> I met the founder of Quick Jacks on my honeymoon. Oh wow! <laughs> like they're like whole world yeah it was very very strange um, um okay also also related to this show last summer i bought a bmw gs uh 96 oh, yes. r1100 gs absolutely one of the best deals i ever could have bought it was thirty nine hundred dollars <laughs> california gorgeous bike it's got like twenty thousand miles on it oh and this one god for thirty nine hundred uh, bucks, that, okay. that yeah. is just perfect. And it came with oh. no joke six thousand dollars in accessories. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, so it's got it's got cases. It's got a comfort seat. It's got pegs. It's got oh drop bars. Uh, Pia fog lamps. Um, extended range fuel tank. Uh, brush guards. After what is? extended range fuel tank on those is it was it like a six gallon tank it's like uh, i want to say it's six gallon it's in liters okay. and i don't remember but it's in liters <laughs> the the biggest one was it came with um uh shoot what are they called the the adjustable shocks that oh. like, oh. full stars have on uh, great question <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remote res- reservoir shocks that yeah. I can't think of the name of right now. They're the the gold ones that everybody thinks very highly of, and I can't. Olins? Olins. Olins, yes. Yes. So it came with a set okay. of Olins, and it came, you know, all of this stuff that this bike has. And it's all from in period. It was all done in the late 90s. So it's like the most Radwood era bike I could That's find. Perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's got heated grips. It's got ABS. Yes. It's got fuel injection. It's Isn't every ABS. It. Yeah, it's, the, it's it was one of the first bikes with ABS. I'm fairly certain ABS is still an option on the GS. Like you can get it with or without. Po- yeah, probably that makes sense. Or at least you can shut it off. I mean, that's but, a freaking steal. That is a killer looking bike. Yeah. So that thing rules, and I'm gonna eventually uh, uh, fly out there and ride it back. Nice. Um, throw like a backpack and a little tent on the back and camp on your way. Yeah, I've done that before. If the weather's nice, um, no problem at all on that. 
just so um, much variation in terrain between Reno and Ohio. Oh, yeah. so variation. <laughs> and I've done that ride before uh, across the country. And it's, it's amazing. Um, that sounds fun. Oh, yeah. I can see oh, the shop. Yeah. I've always had this thing of um, if I'm going to buy a gas bike, it has to be Radwood era. And if I'm going to buy a new bike, it has to be electric. So Speaking of. Speaking of, <laughs> like four days ago, I bought a live wire. Um, Put money down for or? Oh, no. Cash money. Walked oh, in like with a bag from the bank and said, this is mine now. As a gangster move, first of all. Yeah. Second yes. of all, like you physically, it's in your possession. It is mine. My, my, my oh, money. that's awesome. I didn't is it the black one? They were actually yeah. like in customer's hands because th- there was some weird thing where they rolled it out and then we're like hold on hold on, hold on. we're gonna call the live wire one so and then what they, happened they was the 2020 model year was the harley davidson live wire they sold like 300 400 of them world That's worldwide idiot. oh my god and because they only had i want to say they had 150 <laughs> live wire dealers like, how many are like, there certified they installed a charger they got their techs certified to work on evs all that stuff like i think there are 150 of them nationwide and there's there are 700 harley dealers in the u.s right according to google so like 150 of those are live wire dealers and i think each one of those only got two bikes oh man so I don't know for sure. But what I do know is some of those dealers still have 2020s with zero miles that have oh, never geez. been. I mean, that's going to go in somebody's I mean, it's like a and, Barrett Jackson you know, move. Like, sell for big money. I doubt it because they're like, also, they're still so, sitting around and nobody wants to buy them. Like you I said, was talking to a dealer last week that had two. Oh, they man. sold 104,000 motorcycles in the U.S. in 2020. But so they <laughs> sold 300 live wires. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Christ. Okay. So maybe so a little more. They don't. I mean, they're not a publicly traded company, so they don't have to, don't disclose. Have to disclose. But that's what my guesstimate is: is like yeah. 300 to like 500. I mean, maybe the, the math works. Um, they so are, they put, but then they. Amazing, yeah. So then, uh, at they basically they realized that this isn't going to work. They part of the problem was was it was a thirty thousand dollar bike. They priced it at twenty nine seven ninety nine, which is oh like my. a lot of money. It's a big freaking number. It's a really, really, really good bike, and it's like very future forward, and it's incredibly well built, and it's overbuilt, and honestly, they probably lost some money on each one of those, mm-hmm. but. So what they decided to do was they took 2021 off and then in 2022, they spun it off as its own brand. So now Livewire is a different company and that is all of, that's going to be an only electric brand. That was an excellent business decision as we have seen from other companies. And they dropped the price eight grand. Also not going to hurt them. So the fact that there are still bikes from 2020 that cost $30,000 sitting on dealer lots with no miles and never sold. And then two years later, the price drops $8,000. So I've been watching for like, since that announcement, I've been watching for bikes to go under 20 grand Mm -hmm. and they've started to do that. So I ended up getting mine for just under 19. Nice. I've seen them as low as like 17, nine, but they were like far, they were in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. and I would have had to go a thousand miles to get it. So like it wouldn't have saved me any money. So this one was literally three miles away. <laughs> I walked in on Saturday and said, this is what I'm willing to pay. And they said, we can't do that deal. And I said, okay, call me when it's still here in, in July. Mm-hmm. And they said, <laughs> okay. So they took my number and I walked out the door and I went home. And on Monday they called and said, we can do that deal. <laughs> like all right i'll oh, be there on tuesday with you know with the are, money. were there any changes to the bike itself mechanically or aesthetically between the um, harley brand changed, and the livewire brand they changed some of the bodywork, and 
they changed some software stuff. Okay. And that's it. Mm-hmm. But so. they're launching new bikes. So the next one that they have coming out is the uh, Livewire Del Mar. And that's uh, supposed to launch later this year. So mm-hmm. have you spent time on, um, what is it, the Pan America? Yes. The I did a three-day party. off-road school on the Pan America, and it was awesome. Awesome, really? It was awesome. It was. Huh. It is on par. It's not like there are things that it is better at than a GS, and there are things the GS is better at than it. But it's mm-hmm. on par with wow a GS. So they came out swinging. Came out swinging off-road yeah. bike. That's that good motor to hear. rules. It's a it's a brand new motor for them, and it mm-hmm. kicks so much ass. Um, Are they selling? Like they can't sell them. Really? Like they like they can't make enough of. Fuck them. yeah! They're moving That's units. Great news. Harley had its best year in like twelve years last year, just because That's of an off road bike. Good damn yeah. Man. Hey man, off roads in. Say the word overland, and it's gonna. Yeah, fun, exactly. You know, and and. You know, it's priced right. It's a really good bike. It offers a lot of like tech stuff that uh, other brands don't even have available. The squat um, thing. Where it, what's that? The squat feet. Is this one of the yes. squat feature? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Pulp so, light and the bike crouches so you can put your feet down without yep. falling over with when you come to a stop. It. When you come to a stop, it lowers. That's wild. And then as you take off, it it uses the rocking of the bike to pneumatically like pump back up god huh. it's so good it rules it's an option it's like a two thousand dollar option but it's it's yeah. worth it it's really cool. how would a live wire pan america be would that just be the best thing ever well a lot of pan america parts ended up on uh ewan mcgregor's bike for that long way up long way up thing that he did so like before yeah. the pan america existed harley was going to the Pan America line and they were like, Hey, we need some of these prototype parts. Mm-hmm. And they were like, what for? And they were like, we can't tell you, but it's going to be cool. Yeah. Have you heard of this brand Rivian? I have. <laughs> okay. Um, so there will, there will be an electric, a live wire Pan America in some capacity sometimes too. I mean, maybe. Speculate. But, yeah. yeah. It'd be cool. It'd be cool. I mean, they would sell. They would actually sell. I think. Yeah. Because I've done overlanding on an electric bike, on a zero, mm-hmm. and it's so fun. <laughs> like yeah, quiet off roading seems. Quiet off roading rules. It's my it's, favorite. Like AM, ASMR videos, just like yeah. electric defenders rolling up creek yeah. beds. Like that's oh, so, so great. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah. so cool. You can hear birds chirping. Yep. You can hear the wind blowing. You can hear your tires in the dirt. It's incredible. Now we just need Rivian or somebody that isn't Hummer to build something half the size of an R1S and half the price. Right. Yes. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, just man. It'll be a while. I know. I know. Speaking I'm still, of... Uh, I'm still not sure an R1S is big enough. What are you talking about? You call me. We have very different lives right now. <laughs> yeah, I have four times the amount of kids you have. Well, four times zero is still zero. Exactly. So. <laughs> well, that's not true. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe four times is not. Yeah, yeah. More on like this later. 400%. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And then, uh, speaking of rally, I recently got an FRS that yes. um, was so a good. salvage car that needed a lot. The, uh, the, the mold monster. <laughs> I got the mold off yesterday. Oh, nice. Okay, good. That uh, picture was legit mold. It's mold. Yeah, <laughs> that is mold. Like that's like where hazmat. I mean, maybe not that far, but no, nah, it wasn't that bad. Um, so like it had it had clearly been in a bunch of accidents. Like the um, I think it ran along curbs on both sides of the car. Oh my god! What year is this thing? It's a thirteen. So first model, your white FRS. Yes. Probably subjected to the most abuse this side of like oh, a 2007 yeah. Civic SI of anything in recent Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Are the tires still date coded from 2013? Please. Oh, I, I didn't even look. I oh, could. Boy. I didn't even look. Um, judging by the, the, the stuff that I took out of the car, I kind of know who this person was. <laughs> it ah. smells like weed. 
There's a vape pen. Uh, there were <laughs> like, there was a GameStop uh, Platinum Rewards card. Awesome. Like, <laughs> so, you know, so this is. late teens, early twenties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where's Where's a hat that goes towards like a man bun thing in the back end? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got and a flat bill too. All four yes. wheels were were rashed to the point where I would not use them. Oh, like yes. they're, just, they're aluminum scrap at this point. Uh, so Close I bought a, set of, bought a set of wheels and tires. Um, Good ones. You got what? Sparko Terras? Got the Sparkos, yeah. I had those same and, wheels um, on the WRX. Those are great wheels. And I had to put um, uh, tail lights, turn signals, and side markers in and mm-hmm. then the headlights came with the car and the bumper came with the car so i had to kind of like figure out how to get it all to bolt back together <laughs> because like uh, you know the wheel liners had been ripped and like yeah you know, so there's a, there's a bit of zip tie engineering going on here but um it's a solid car like there's no rust there's no rot uh, well, just bolt just bolt small <laughs> so bolt. okay the important things Engine yeah. good, yeah. It started up, ran and drove. Uh, the downside is it's an automatic. Oh, there's the catch, yeah. But yeah, I mean, but still, it's but actually, like rally cross fun car, put it low and go have like, some fun. Exactly, All things considered, exactly. it's actually not a bad transmission, yeah. So, I think, and you know, I plan to use it for track day stuff, rally crosses, mm-hmm. the occasional autocross, and I want to bring my wife with me. And she can drive stick, but she's not like super confident at it. So, and she hasn't done it in probably two or three years at this point. So, oh, so this is the perfect. So yeah, example. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a awesome. shared shared thing for both of us. We can have some fun with it. It costs almost nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it'll never depreciate unless if you crash it to the point that it cannot be fixed. Right. Exactly. Well, exactly. It's, it's Toyota guts too. Like it's the components are going to be available forever. Like they don't change stuff because it works. Like there's stuff for my 80 series Land Cruiser on modern forerunners because it kept working. Like Mm -hmm. eBay turbo. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Apparently these motors, like the 2013, 2014 motors are a little weak. So like, they don't look good. Probably stuff. not. Yeah. Okay, but still, like, you had a hard enough time I getting mean, the oil filter out. I don't know that yeah, we right. start throwing eBay turbos on it. I know. I don't um, know what happened with that, but somebody <laughs> put that thing on, like, with a torque wrench. I don't know. Never had to use a mallet, but have had to hammer a, a screwdriver through an oil filter. I mean, yeah, I think we I all... Also, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, not the same. The worst uh, part is when the screwdriver just <laughs> tears the filter and yeah. it's still stuck there. Like, yep. And then you yeah. grab it, and then you get metal shards in your finger. Yes. And, the whole, yeah. and, the whole thing. and you go to do right. an MRI, and they're like, do you have any metal in you? And I was like, well, kind of. Like, yes. <laughs> What's that's, metal? That's a personal question. I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, I still need to order the rally wheels and tires, but I'm getting some, like, takeoff stage rally gravel tires. Okay. And, awesome. 15-inch. Uh, uh, finding a set of 15s that clear those brakes. What 15s uh, clear those brakes? There's uh, some like rally specific fitments that okay. do. Uh, it's like a thousand dollars for a set, which is like not cheap, but not for, not you know. I mean, in the world thing. of wheels, that's not that right, good. right. I mean, so um, so I need to get those on order, and then I already ordered the. Uh, apparently, in Japan, they have a um, rally spec series. For these so they have a trd um like bolt-on lift kit okay how much lift are we talking not much like an inch inch or inch and a half okay yeah um, yeah not much and it doesn't need much because it's you know american ride height is already higher than jdm spec anyway true so it's probably not going to be that much higher but it is stiffer so which is fine yeah I mean, for I mean, rally stages, but what are you going to armor at all? Are you going to put like a skid plate on it? So it has a factory skid plate. And I think for, for rally cross, that's probably fine. Plastic? Um, no, it's metal. 
Oh, it's metal. Okay. Yeah, it's metal. Oh, good. As I mean, the oil pan is you know the only real worry. Think, Everything else. Right. Think right. this is a photo of that spec series. Yeah. Right. That's, that is the first second that car was on dirt. <laughs> well, yeah, it's clean. <laughs> so uh yeah so it still needs a few things here and there and mm-hmm. you know obviously it, it's got a salvage title so it'll require some finagling to get it re-registered once i get everything fixed and, and all that but you know i'll be in it for under eight grand all in <laughs> you know nice. with rally tires with rally suspension with the whole you know so like and for a toy, you can't really beat that. Like that's that's pretty good in today's market. That is as as bottom number, bottom dollar as you're going to go for something yeah. that actually is like a known entity. And like I if you so try, much. if you try to find a, a 13 FRS that's in decent shape right now, it's a twelve thousand yeah, dollar car, twelve to yeah. fourteen all day, which is bonkers. I know they were I, like nine grand two years like, ago. This is a 10-year-old car. Why is it still this much money? It was yeah. 24 new and it's still 12. Are you uh what kind of livery is going on this thing? Undecided. Um I kind of like the spec series red, white, and gray they had there. I feel it's like pretty cool. Be, be oh, good I might do it. like a, a Tom's Castrol, like uh pretty good. Celica, Cel- uh, Celica, yeah. Oh, could you do something just to like piss people? Like put like a livery that's only ever been on Hondas on it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that Castro uh, one's got a lot of like curvy or, lines oh in it. Like, or or do like a, a BRZ or Subaru livery on the FRS. <laughs> could do, yeah. Why not? That'd be so funny. Um, so okay. that's that's great though that thing's gonna be a blast you guys are gonna have so much fun or better yet yeah. you got to go all the way back to like the the uh the, oh my god why am i blanking the, you need to go find like a lancia livery from like Ooh. group b days alitalia yes. yeah that that'll yeah. absolutely piss them off <laughs> um so yeah and then i have so i'm working on that i'm working on the cayenne are you gonna uh, tow it with the ambulance I think I'm going to drive it to the events, okay. but, but the ambulance is always there. Um, right now, the ambulance needs a little bit of work. Uh, <laughs> it was in the background of every photo I've yeah. shared. It, it looks like it hasn't moved in a bit. It, I drove it here, <laughs> parked it, and have not moved it since. Okay. So um, what's it does this, have so the best Super Duty wheels, though. It does. I I ordered those, and I love them. They're great. They're the best part of the van. American racing, American racing wheels. Yes. Fuck yes. Yeah. Okay, so this um, thing was this was the Radwood Express, right? This was more or less. Yeah, uh, we needed to haul a bunch of stuff for Radwood. You know, the t-shirts, the pop-up tents, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we were using a Honda um, Odyssey, and we outgrew that. So <laughs> we were looking at a lot of space. We were looking at full-size commercial vans and stuff, but the market was starting to go crazy. So then I started looking at um, like diesel uh, vans and those are crazy. Mm -hmm. So like if you want a, uh, you know, F-350 Super Duty with a diesel, it's what, 30 grand? Yeah, I mean, for like... If you want... Beat one. (laughs) If you want an E350 Super Duty with a diesel, it's like 20 grand. But if you get an ambulance, it's like 10 grand. Yes. <laughs> so ad- admittedly, this thing has a lot of miles on it. It's at like a quarter million miles. And it's it's it sat idling for like six years. So the average speed is like 0. 0.4 <laughs> miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so which motor is it? Uh, it's a six liter. Oh, okay. So it's not great. Not great. Not. Um, it's fine. Awesome, but it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So um, I've had two minor issues with it. When I bought it, it was like making weird noises and stuff. And I took it to a diesel shop and they said, oh, it needs a new turbo. Oh, boy. I put a new turbo in it. Uh, okay. Um, drove it probably, I don't know, 35. Five ish thousand miles. Um, and then I had a, um, 
EGR valve stock mm. while I was in middle of nowhere. Um, anyway, so that I could have side of the road and got it running again. That could have been a while you were in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so so then we we start going down. We we get to um, Nevada. We pick up everything. We start going down to Texas for the most recent, what was supposed to be the most recent Radwood show. And uh, we made it like almost to the Texas border and the show, we had to cancel it because of weather. Oh, postponed. yeah. So I headed north and ended up back in Michigan. And as I was coming into Michigan, the check engine light comes on. <laughs> and, and the turbo won't spool and oh. so it's just like it's super slow it once you're up to highway speed it's fine but mm. getting there takes so friggin long without any boost <laughs> how much is it weigh? like I nine thousand pounds uh, yeah probably i don't even know a lot well, enough <laughs> yeah uh and it was loaded down with all kinds of like literally everything rad yeah. yeah um so uh, I think, you know, I ran the code and I, it says it's an EGR issue. So I think the EGR cooler line, like the pipe for it is actually clogged. Um, so anyway, I, I need to take it all out, take the turbo out, clean out the turbo, put everything all the way back, you know, and, and because it's a van, all of that is like under the dash. I was going to ask, do you access it from the front or do you have to like both pop the console out with the both. both? Both. Yeah. You need like Gumby arms. Yes. From both yeah. sides. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that, that's kind of like uh, now that Radwood is no, no longer mine. Uh, shocker. Uh, <laughs> it did catch a lot of people by surprise. I mean, yeah, the news was. Yeah. Uh, I'll, didn't we'll catch you by surprise, presumably. No, it didn't. <laughs> I was well aware. Um, but uh, yeah, now that, I, now that I'm no longer um, even a Radwood employee, I don't need the van for that. So it'll kind of be a like track day hauler thing for Great my motorcycles. Purpose for it. Can you so, load the motorcycle into the back? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, awesome. So um, I'm... I also forgot to mention this, but I'm working on a, uh, uh, what is it, a K100 RS BMW sports bo- sport bike from like 87. I'm going to wait for Chris to pull a picture up because I have absolutely no <laughs> idea what that is. Well, as long as he said it correctly. <laughs> it just, <laughs> I am, oh, cool. cool. This, yeah. this is a 91. It might be too new. Chris, is your hand still yeah, bruised like from the IV? I'm yeah, just well, that that's something else, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's similar to that. It doesn't oh, have any body work awesome. on it right now, but it's similar to that. Is um, it a four-cylinder? Yes. Yep. Oh, boy. Okay. It's a, lay, it's a laid over four, so it's an inline four, but it's sitting on its side. Okay. That's... Uh, um, I mean, that's center of gravity should be low... <laughs> So I, it kind of fell into my lap again, and um, I'm going to turn that into that. a track. I'm going to turn that into a track bike. Cool. So uh, that'll be my Radwood track bike because I'll have that, and I'll have the live wire. I can load both into the van at the same time. Go down to Mid Ohio for the weekend, right. run both bikes. You know, run the live wire until it runs out of juice, and then run the mm-hmm. 100. Yeah. And, Get an inverter on the van and just charge the live wire right back up. Right. It does have an inverter. It does have 110. If it's an ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So, okay, so so the ambulance needs a thing or Yeah, it, it needs a few. It needs a little bit of work. So um, right now I'm looking at uh, I don't really want to do it, but legally I could uh, do an EGR delete because it's it's heavy enough that it's you know it doesn't need to pass emissions in it counts yeah. as commercial vehicle stuff exactly to deal yeah. with it yeah it's so i'm kind of debating doing that um it would save me a lot of time and hassle and money and effort and but, also 
eliminate the possibility of failure in the future, theoretically. Theoretically, yes. Um, Not really the most PC thing to do. No. And the <laughs> biggest, apparently the biggest issue, the reason that they fail is because the oil cooler is clogged. So probably I will be buying an external oil cooler and putting that on, doing mm -hmm. it the right way. But um, it feels very mighty car mods all of a sudden, like <laughs> a giant oil intercooler <laughs> yeah. for your turbo. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, what else am I working on right now? I mean, how's the Boxster? What's the, the Boxster? Boxster, is a, yeah. the Boxster hasn't really moved in a while. I cut the windshield off and I stripped out all of the interior. And I got a set of Lotus carbon back bucket seats for it. Okay. And yeah, it's kind of sitting like that. Uh, there's probably more stuff on it right now. I feel like uh, those carbon back bucket, I, a lot of people try to like, they'll put those in Miatas or something yeah. of yeah. the sort, you know. It's, it's the tall guy mod for a Miata it's, because it's so thin that you can sit lower in the bolted to car. The actual tub and yeah. it might fit in one yeah you might um so it's a good seat there's not uh, much of a car in that picture <laughs> not much of a car no <laughs> not much of a car um so it i mean like all of that has to come out like the fuel tank has to come out the brakes all have to come out the whole all the suspension the motor everything has all got to come out and then i'm going to take it to get the chassis done for um, the roll bar and stiffening, you know, I'm going to tie in the front shocks and tie in the rear shocks and get, you know, all of that stiffened and, and structural. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the the hard work begins. So, Jeez. yeah. <laughs> when when that is the easy part, <laughs> you know, it. no, it's a real project. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that'll be a long term project, but like I have. Eventually, I'll have the time to get it done. I just need to get it here. One, I need to get a place to put it. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at getting like some warehouse space with a lift and like, you know, nice. actually doing the right thing for it. What is the end goal for the box? Are we uh, presumably uh, track, track, track day. Bar, Yeah. But track. electric, fully electric. No, no, no. Oh. Hybrid. Hybrid, okay. The front axle will be powered by uh, electric and the rear motor will be gas. Okay. Um, the I, original engine? So, <laughs> hey. scope creep is a thing. And <laughs> it is. I, you know, I bought the leaf motor and I was like, oh, you know, it'll be good because it's like 200 horsepower on the front axle and 200 horsepower on the rear axle. It's be great. And I was talking to, uh, at Autopia, the electric car show that I run, I was talking to one of our sponsors and they were like, oh, we're going to have a standalone um, motor to run a small Tesla motor or, you know, standalone controller to run a small mm -hmm. Tesla motor. They already have one for a large Tesla motor, but that's too much. I mean, a large Tesla motor, you're talking like 700 horsepower and I do not need that. Yeah, that's overkill. But the small one, you're talking like 400. I was like, well, I can't have twice as much power on the front axle front. as I have on the rear axle. <laughs> oh my God, would that be a ridiculous piece of machinery? So, so <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm looking at getting a 996 turbo motor to put in the back and then run a, a small Tesla motor in the front. And a 996 turbo motor, you can easily get to like 700 horsepower with just bolt-ons. So, you know, 700 in the back and 400 in the front for like 1100 system horsepower is like not that hard, you know? That is also not scope creep. That is a scope. <laughs> that's scope leap. Yeah. 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 God damn. Oh, so man. you're buying a Lucid is what I heard. You're going for yeah, 1100 right. horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And it's going to weigh sub three. That's the goal. Um, factory was 20... Eight, I think, mm -hmm. and the goal is to have it weigh less than it did stock. Is it automatic? Like, can you use a PDK for that, or does it have to be? Uh, no, it'll it'll be a manual. Okay. Oh wow. Huh. It'll be a manual. The front motor God. is a single speed, so there's no shift uh, in gear at all. 
Um, the rear motor will be a six speed. So like that makes sense. It'll, you know, and you can do it in a, a bunch of different ways. You can have mm -hmm. it feed in with throttle position. You can have it mm -hmm. feed in with, you know, it can measure where the boost is and it can fill the boost. At, like if you drop off. Oh, boost, that's you know, so cool. That. So like there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Can you decouple it and just rear wheel drive it if you want to? Yeah. Yeah. So like that's the thing is the I want to be able to do like a charge lap where I'm like charging the batteries and, and not actually using any power mm -hmm. and then do a full power lap and then okay. do a charge lap and then do a full power lap. Like, it's an F1 car. Yeah. And you can do push the gas and you can do, you know, all these kinds of things that are like, yep. like, you know, it'll just, Man. hopefully fingers crossed one day it will work. That's In my head. It works great. Are you still going for the crazy like speedster windshield? Yeah, uh, no oh, windshield. No windshield. No full windshield. face helmet and yeah, full helmet. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. The tiny little mirrors. It's a nine eight six, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. It's a ninety seven first year. That's wild. I, that thing is going to be like, I mean, yeah, showstopper. Yeah. And also probably deeply terrifying at yes. full yes. clip. Well, so um, the the. The wheels and tires that I have for it should be enough grip because I have um, ten and a halfs in the front and twelve and a halfs in the rear. Jesus! So that you're gonna have to run like a three thirty-five in yeah. the back. Yeah, like God. like Viper yeah. fitment. I was gonna say that's Viper rears. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a stance because the boxer is. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have it's not the size of Viper. Right, but twelve inch wide. Are you going to have over fenders? Like, are we going to have to yeah. widen? No, oh, okay. So we're going to have to so widen the stance. Look up, look up um, 996 GT3R. And the, the rear flares for that are my plan for the rear. And then the front flares I already have. I bought a set of carbon fenders from a JGTC um, boxer that ran in Japan in like 99. Dude, every shot of the 996 GT3Rs from the front. <laughs> yeah, of course. So Viper is about six inches longer and six inches wider. Oh, geez. So your tire to footprint ratio. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be insane. Oh, man. It's if so you, good. If you see the one that's... Um... Oh, yeah. my God. So kind of that much wider in the back? Yes. Yeah, that's the plan. That's madness. So those that flare is available. Like you can just buy it off the shelf. So just, just like, like think of think of a, a rump. Like it's just gonna have wider hips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got a dunk. Because <laughs> I, I was trying to imagine. I was like, you said twelve inch wide in the rear and a nine nine six turbo engine. Yeah. How much bigger is that engine than a, a nine eight six engine? Well, it fits in the same space in a yeah. nine nine six. Okay. 996 has also used the naturally aspirated and oh, the turbo. Got it. So I'm sure that I'll have to find, like, do some some tubing to figure mm -hmm. out where the turbos are going to go. But, like, there's all kinds of room because the gearbox is behind the motor. Right. So the motor's in the middle. And you eliminated the front passenger seat. Yes. Correct. <laughs> but that's the turbos. Where right. Yeah. Batteries are going to go where the passenger used to be to offset my weight, so it'll be See, side to side. You mm -hmm. literally thought of everything. We are you going to do like do it? Uh, not yet. <laughs> are you going to do the tiny I little? Have, I haven't thought of time, space, money, or uh... <laughs> <laughs> the concept is there. Everything else yeah. is uh, yeah. a work in progress. I mean, that thing's going to be rowdy as hell. So yeah, I hope so. I hope so. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Do you? Do you find yourself kind of like overwhelmed? Yes. Like doing a little and a little and a little, or is, do you end up, I mean, the FRS, it seems like there's been a lot of progress really quick or. Yeah. I, I think the thing with the FRS was that it was so it, like, it was a bunch of little stuff. It was very like quick. Like I got the endorphins Relatively. because I was able to put the bumper on and go, Oh, that was a half hour project. That was awesome. 
and then I'll do another half hour project. Like tonight I had to, um, I had to install the driver's side taillight. And the problem was previously somebody had used uh, vampire clips oh, no. on the right. So <laughs> they, they had done some, some like uh, rear fog light or something like that um, with vampire clips. And the, when I took them off, it just broke the wire. All, yeah. yeah. So I had to resolder the, the taillight wires together to get the taillight to work. Soldering is um, fun at least. What's that? Soldering is at least fun. Sh- sure. <laughs> if you, could you see what you were doing? Yeah. Was it, oh, yeah. Okay. It wasn't, it, it wasn't horrible. It was fine. I'm just not very good at soldering. I, and I also meat hands and I don't really know how like little things work. Yeah, um, I heard extra effort there and he was like soldering fun. I was like, that was extra effort. It doesn't matter what the task I love the is. OCD it's extra aspect. effort. Yeah, but it's o- the OCD of it is yeah, soldering keyboards is a blast. Yeah, you just tap. <laughs> I don't know. I don't do that. So uh so anyway, yeah, like little things like that. Like I did that right before I got on the show. Like I was I started at not at eight o'clock. And by 8.45, I was done. I had the taillight in, and I took a video of it working. So I was like, oh, cool. That was an easy project. You know, I can do that and be done and be like, oh, yeah, I feel accomplished. Um, Whereas, like, some of the big stuff, like, I need to take the whole interior out because it smells like weed. And, (laughs) you know, steam clean everything and, and all that. Like, And, like, yesterday I spent probably three hours cleaning up uh, mold. So it's, but, but it's also snowball effect. It totally is. And I've seen a huge change from when it was sitting in the driveway mm-hmm. covered in mold with no bumper and no headlight yeah. and, yeah. You know, and it hadn't run in two years. And that was the thing that kind of sold me on it was it had been sitting there for two years. I got in it with the key and started it right up. Like that's it, crazy. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. Let's do this. Oh, man. It, I mean, you start. also, you have goals with a timestamp on them for this car. Like, yeah. You know, you want to be. Yeah. The rally, rally cross, cross autocross season, season is coming. Yeah. yeah. It's too, it's soon. It might still be cold in Ohio, but that's next. That's like next month for you guys. Yeah. Well, we still rally cross in the, in the cold. Yeah. You just drive on snow. It's yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so loose surface is loose surface. Some people are into that. The moral of the story is I bite <laughs> off more than I can chew. I have too many projects. And if anybody wants a deal on something, I'm in Reno, Nevada. Uh, go pick it up, and I'll mail you the title. <laughs> Dude, we, you have no idea how many times I've calculated the distance between Reno and here, and it's 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 like twenty four hours. Close. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. it's only two states over. Like, no, yeah. it's so mm-hmm. far it's away. Far. <laughs> yeah, it's far. Yeah, far from anything. I do a lot of dri- like driving. And- how many miles do you drive a year? The most I ever did was in, I guess, in 19. I think we did like nine Radwood events that year. And I want to say I did like 58,000 miles or something like that. That's pretty good. That's That's pretty good. That was was a lot of miles. That was a lot of miles. That's a lot. That's a lot of road time. I did 23 the last year. But that includes like a trip to Glacier. Like that's like... Yeah. I've done 37. Well, I'm doing like I didn't think I could pack any more in. So one of the good things about this um, automotive uh, media lifestyle that I lead is I'm going on a press trip next week. Nice. And I was like, well, I'm in Cleveland, but I need to get to Reno. And they were like, okay, no problem. So we'll just book you two one ways, and it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So they are, I'm flying to Georgia and then I'm flying from Georgia to Reno. <laughs> oh yeah, they'll just pay for your ticket. They don't care where you're going. Then you can drive up, something back. I'm picking up my 912E and driving that back. Yeah, oh, we need to talk still, about the 912. It, it's still that. kicking? Nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's good to hear. It's better than it's ever been. It's mechanically brand new. Is it less obnoxiously loud? Yes. Yes. It Ooh. has an exhaust. It's got a brand new motor. I rebuilt the suspension. That, that was my COVID project was I... Uh, tore all of the suspension out and made it way too low and way too stiff. Uh, <laughs> made it worse. By making it better, you made it worse. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to drive that back. 
Cool. And then uh, I'm doing, I think um, either Harley Davidson or, or Razor is next. And I'll go back to Reno for that and get the um, BMW GS and bring that here. So every flight home from a press trip is a flight to Reno. Yeah. And then you drive from yes. Reno yeah. to Ohio. Correct. Yes. Hold on. Back up. Polaris Razor? Yes. Elaborate, please. Uh, they're doing some turbo, turbo R launch. Hey. Remember that one we talked about some shows back? I'm sure yeah, that the... I've literally never been in a side-by-side, so immediately... Really? Oh, man. There. You're going to have a good go. time. So I write for UTV Driver. Uh, so you're going to have a good time. Cool. I, can, I can assure you. you well, I'm doing... Next, the one that I'm going to Georgia for is Can-Am. Oh, they're doing a, they're doing a full product line, like whatever. Like yeah. they're bringing all of their stuff. Oh, to one place, uh, yeah. BRP just announced electric bikes for 24. I saw that. That's very cool. Yes, it is. I Completely about that. in antithesis of the, you know, 210 horsepower, 2000 pound side by sides. <laughs> um, Chris, you're, you're on mute. Um, <laughs> But you yeah. can't hear the dog chewing on the bone like oh. right next to me. So. <laughs> I think we, we're going to instate a new law for the show that if there is a dog doing something it shouldn't be doing, it has to make an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I went on mute was because he threw the bone. And so, like, <laughs> you guys didn't see it. It almost hit me as it went flying under over here. And I was like, all right, I'll yeah. just click mute here just in case it bangs into something. <laughs> <laughs> you get mad at it. So, what else? Um, I mean, yeah. Do you still have the tour, the Buick Torx? Is that still oh, yeah. around? Yeah, okay. that's, that's my wife's daily driver. It's sitting right out there. Um, Surprisingly good cars. That's an amazing car. It's literally, like it's closing in on 60,000 miles. It needs nothing. It hmm. has never needed anything. It's amazing. Good. Drives good great. Day. Love it. Um, yeah. When's the warranty run out? Soon. Because I remember you had ideas for it last time. Yeah, so um, I ordered some lowering springs. Um, I have a set of rotiforms coming for it. Oh, God. (laughs) That escalated so quickly. And uh, there's a company called Trifecta Tuning that uh, has a um, 100 horsepower bump, I think. Like plug and play 100 horsepower? Yeah. Yeah. And probably better gas mileage on like an eco tune. Probably, yeah. God. I don't know. What so, yeah, some plans, some things that we're working on with that as well. Um, That's madness. And then, uh, yeah, I think that I think we've covered all of my projects. Right now, we're working on a 1920 uh, brick fourplex in the heart of Cleveland. So, oh, God. we're we're the biggest to- project yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, oh, yeah. yeah. The, the good news though is when this one doesn't move, no one will like <laughs> shame you for the fact that this project hasn't moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and hopefully this one will appreciate in value. Uh-huh. <laughs> Real estate's almost always a good investment. Yeah, almost. 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 I mean, with the exception of you know, like 2007. 2007 and eight. But <laughs> Oh, uh, in the past. So Did yeah, that, that, uh, I don't know. I just bought a house, so I fucking hope so. <laughs> working on a lot of things, and then I'm still, yeah. You know, I run flat sixes. I still do blogs for Jalopnik. You know, I'm mm-hmm. closing in on four thousand blogs there. I think four is it three thousand? Yeah, Holy either three shit. or four. I don't remember. Wow. I have to look. That's a big spread. I know, but. Man, you're you're one of the holdouts on Jalopnik. You're like holding down the fort for you us know, old folk from the industry. I I show up every day. I get my shit done. Yep. Nobody bothers me. I get my check. Mm-hmm. I, I have no I have no issues. Yeah. I'm good. That's that's a good gig. Like literally, everyone else is gone by the time I come in. So I I just sit down. I write a couple blogs every night and. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the month, I send in my invoice and, uh, you know, two weeks later it gets paid. Yeah, that doesn't suck. (laughs) 
that doesn't suck. So, yeah. all right, we are, uh, we're, we're closing on time. So what kind of stuff yeah. are you uh, excited for looking forward to this year for, for the 22 adventures of Brad, since you seem to be uh, always in a different place, always playing think, a different thing. I think that's the thing I'm excited about is like actually staying put for a while. Like not, I mean, I'm still doing press trips, but I'm not like going everywhere and, and driving all the time. Mm. So I'll still be going to Radwoods, but like, I don't have to drive the merch van. I can, I can fly in, stay for a yeah. day and fly home. Like, <laughs> you go to Philly? Uh, yeah, I'll be there. Okay. For sure. see you there. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, you know, stress-free for me. I actually get to see the show now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it would, when the best part will be somebody going, "Hey, Brad, what about this?" And you're like, "I don't, I don't work here." Yeah, <laughs> not my problem. Ask someone who's paid to care. <laughs> uh, like a huge uh, trick in one hand, your sunglasses come back down. Like, yeah, right. Just... <laughs> no, okay. I, you know, all right. One of the things that I'll that I'll enjoy, you know, the thing that I always enjoyed about Radwood was the people, and one of the things that stopped running it was I never got to meet the people. I got, I always had to stay like secluded and, and running yep. stuff and running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So like, I'll finally be able to be in a position where I can just hang with friends, walk around, look at cool cars and go, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. What a cool show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, business and pleasure are two separate entities. Yes. Yeah. Gets yeah. uh Yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. Is we built we built a car show for ourselves, ourselves. <laughs> for the thing that we wanted, and then uh, couldn't enjoy it because we were we were so busy working. So because literally everyone else wanted it too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, because you built something that it turns out other people were fucking excited about, which is you know what great. It, I and I I think it'll only get better. You know, I'm the reason one of the reasons that we decided to sell was there were five of us running shows for like 8,000 people. God. So we're like, I think we're stretched a little too thin here. Like yeah. there's, you know, so, so one of the things that Haggerty will bring to the table is not only will they be able to secure better venues because they have better connections and stuff like that, but they'll have the resources to run a merch booth, to mm-hmm. ship everything, to, you know, all the logistics, all the, you know, timing, right and all of that so they'll be able to run that yeah. to a higher yeah. standard than just four jamokes and my wife running the merch booth and you know so right i th- i think good things are coming for radwood and i think that you know it'll only get better mm-hmm. for me so that's so great there's a little bit of me that's like you know sad to see my baby you know go away but it's not going anywhere and i'll still be able to, i'll be able to enjoy it more honestly. yeah and you have Autotopia, which is yeah, and only get, Autopia, especially which, only going to get bigger. Yeah, yeah. Autopia, all electric stuff. Uh, we're doing two shows this year because our sponsors told us they wanted to do more. And where are we're those like, shows for the listeners? Okay, well, yeah, sure. We'll do twice as many shows. Why not? <laughs> let's do it. If you're going to fund it, let's go. Exactly. Yeah. If somebody's writing a check, okay. yeah. Where Where are those shows for uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles? Um, I think. I mean, those are obviously the two biggest markets for EVs at the moment. Um, I think there could be potential for a Portland or Seattle or Detroit or mm-hmm. maybe Atlanta mm-hmm. um, in the future. But for now, it's just those two. Circle back this time next year. And it'll yeah, be right. 10 of them. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> oh, man. Are you coming to, uh, are you going to New York? The auto show? Uh, no. no, I don't really go to auto shows. Okay. That's what I just, told them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually just me and Camille walking around shitting on anything. So nice. we're always looking for uh, pushing for stuff off. Party. What would you push off? A, a cargo I didn't push or a rack? It. No, it was, the, it was the roof rack on the Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. Yeah, that's what it was. Which he grabbed and proceeded to try to shake, which wasn't bolted down at all. Nice. So. <laughs> All right, cool. So we'll we'll see if in, uh, in Philly at uh, at Ridewood and yeah, bring Autotopia. I, I will probably ride my GS to Philly. Nice, more, more than likely. 
I think. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's only like what? A, it's a day, like eight, nine hours. Uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good day. God, that probably Western section of Pennsylvania is fucking terrible. Though. I don't even know. Um, it's probably like. 800 something miles i just put an acronym it's a six and a half that's it that's a lot of interstate yeah 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 430 440 miles substantially less than i thought yeah it's i mean yeah i could easily do that in a day on a bike that's not a problem Mm -hmm. well you got a comfort seat so right (laughs) (laughs) zing Oh man! You need to make a little sign that just says you ride by people. You can hold up says six thousand dollars in accessories, like yeah, just right, right. <laughs> like a humble brag. <laughs> what weekend is that? Like Olin's. <laughs> That's um. Did you see my oh, fog lights? <laughs> shit! I just got an announcement on my phone that Las Vegas will host a Formula One night race starting yep. in twenty twenty three. Yep. God damn it! Why that'll be fun? Why are you so mad about that? Ugh, because it's going to be the most commercialized thing ever. All of it is. That's one. That's that like, is. Like it's literally what F one is. The I most know, commercial. But, like, like, I but also, three races in the U.S. It's three kinda, races in the U.S. That's kind of cool. It's all because we, it's a U.S. media company bought F one, and we're like, yeah. sure, yeah, let's get yeah. these dollars too. They know what well, they're doing. Yeah. Part of it was Austin last year was effing packed. The highest attended Formula One event ever. In history, and I was there. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I actually enjoyed the crap out of NASCAR there last week. I was like, that, yeah. I actually, it, it, was it was almost like a V8 Supercars race, but not was almost, <laughs> almost. They didn't bump uh, enough. Less V8 Supercars buried cases of beer. Okay, Radwood Philly is May twenty first for those listening, and uh, and Brad, if you want to connect about maybe meeting up in Pennsylvania somewhere to do some side by side stuff that Sunday. Oh, have a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Got some parks I, that some parks. I don't have to do anything on Sunday. Let's do it. <laughs> have to pass. Like you would drive past them on your way cool. back. So yeah, that sounds fun. We'll talk. I uh, I have to reassemble a machine before that happens, but you know, your cool. dad's. Yes. Is it still disassembled? Yes. What's he been doing all winter, or what have you been doing all winter? Schoolwork. Yeah, exactly. And so working. Even busy. Well, if there's, I mean, if there's trails, I'll be there on my GS. So oh, I can yeah, ride yeah. that too. Yeah. Oh, you definitely 100%. I, I mean, plenty of people bomb around these places on dual sports and everything. So. That sounds fun. Yeah, let's talk. I mean, so. feel content. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so on that note, um, I Chris, can wrap it up. shall we uh, yeah. wrap up? So you can rate and review the show on iTunes. I still call it iTunes, iTunes. Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to the show. You, it's definitely Spotify. Like and subscribe on YouTube. You can follow Brad. He's back on Instagram now. It's plug in high Brad. H Y. Yeah, H Y Brad. Yeah. Uh, and then it's B C Brunel on Twitter. I'm pretty sure I follow him in both places. So, but I, I also haven't been on Twitter in a hot minute. So, and uh, read Brad shit on. Shalopnik, Shalopnik, Flat Sixes, uh, Popular Science. Ooh, as of cool. this week, nice. That's, that's kind of a, that's a different Pop one. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a, I like that. There, that's a name. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a recognizable name for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, follow awesome. Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is, oh Ross, you're dirty. What did I do? You switched our Instagram tags with our names in the notes. <laughs> like you, you got me. I was week. like, Ross is that's not Ross. Ross I is no, not like the one from Friends. And I'm at Overlanding Dad. About that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was man. dirty. I didn't even have the right zoom <laughs> at the top of it, but that was dude. I my uh, brain, you forgetting I've been on narcotics <laughs> for knee surgery. And I looked at that and went, Is this normal right now? Like I totally that? forgot about that. I did that literally <laughs> last week when you were like can't change this shit on me man <laughs> also go follow autopia 2099 yes because uh we got some cool stuff coming up this year mm-hmm. and we're only going to see more cool shit from evs and yeah. i bet you guys because you have sponsors and things get yeah. more of that stuff sooner so we yeah. need to do a 
Tesla powered Isuzu Via Cross. Oh, mm, I actually know where a Via Cross is. Mm. Cross has owned one in the past. I, he didn't yeah, perk up there. So <laughs> I know where an X90 is too. I mean, that's also exciting. That for me, like when they talk about like things from the 90s that like, I am an X90 guy. Like there's one, somebody, there's a park ranger at Rocky Mountain National Park who has a purple one. And every time I've been there, <laughs> it's parked on the, like she, that's her daily. Like it's, still, yeah. I don't know why, if it's a she or he, but I'm assuming so, it's a she. It's, it's self-hatred. I want, I, I want an X90, so. Yep. Anyway, you yep. can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, everyday driver, US News and World Report. If you want to talk about adventure vans, give me a shout. That, ma- that matters way more to me now. So <laughs> I, might, I might go back and bleep out the thing about the, I can't say it again. I have to bleep that out too. Mm. <laughs> I need I'm to just have a conversation. <laughs> make up a whole bunch of shit and see if they pick up on it. Yeah. Chris said they're doing carbon tubbed adventure vans, <laughs> hybrid powertrains. Oh. Do the, all right, I'm going to stop recording. It's time Thank to you, stop. Brad. Thanks, Thanks Brad. for coming on the show. Thanks for having it's me. Been a blast Had a great time. time.